we're gonna have a little forage in this woodland here we've found a bit of woodland to walk around we're gonna have a little forage for some mushrooms for dinner I am seeing lots of mushrooms about but lots of things I don't know what they are so I've seen things that I can identify as uh, milk caps and I've seen other things that look like russula what we have here though this is porcelain fungus growing on some fallen beach that is edible so we're gonna have that you can tell it's porcelain fungus because well for one thing it's growing on beach it's pure white it's got this sticky glossy cap I will have that one I we'll hope we'll hope to find some more porcelain fungus because apparently it's a good edible We've got a lot of other things like this. This is a, a russula, I think. There aren't very many green russulas, so that should be easy to identify, but I'm still not at the point where I can trust russulas yet. So, we'll have a look and see what else we've got. But that porcelain fungus we will have. Not a very auspicious start, but we've also got this, which is well, actually, no, I thought that was the start of an ink cap, but it's, I, I don't think it's a shaggy ink cap. I think it might be a magpie ink cap. Not really sure, so I think I'll leave that one. We've got a rather damaged looking, probably a bolete or something, probably a birch bolete. Since, a beach bolete, since we are right next to a beech tree. Although it might not be, it might be a large russula. I've just seen mine there, but yeah, it might be that, whatever that is. Anyway, we'll keep looking and we'll get some mushrooms for dinner. So yeah, Jenny spotted this. Look, that's a magpie ink cap. I don't even know whether that's edible. I wouldn't try, but it's a lovely one. And there's an even better one here. Look at that. That is a very lovely specimen of the magpie ink cap. Here's another one in a later stage of its life cycle. This one's starting to dissolve. They kind of self-digest. There's another one there. And I imagine if we looked around, we'd probably find a few more. Anyway, I'll get some still photos so that you can enjoy those properly. It is something potentially worth having. Let's have a look in here. This is a cauliflower fungus. Let's see what sort of condition it's in. Oh, it's a little bit too far gone, I would say. Yeah, a little bit too open and mature. That's a shame. But there are plenty of pine trees around here, so if we keep looking, we might find one that's in slightly younger condition. But there we go, cauliflower fungus. And this is a squirrel or magpie or jay lunch table. So this is where, where an animal has brought some chestnuts here, carried them here, because this is not a chestnut tree, this is a pine tree. So an animal has carried these chestnuts here and opened them up and eaten them. Probably with its back to the tree so it can't be, so nothing can sneak up on it. But yeah. I don't know where the nearest chestnut tree is. Uh, looking around, I can't see one immediately close. So it's been carried quite away. So another cauliflower fungus down here, quite away, away from the pine tree that it's growing on. Usually you find them right at the base of the pine tree, but there must be a root that comes up here or something like that. This one feels like it might be worth picking. It still feels nice and firm. It's very open, but it feels good and firm. These need a, a lot of cleaning because obviously you can see the structure of the thing. That very easily accumulates bugs and pine needles and bits of dirt and so on. So this will need cutting up and brushing out and possibly washing, I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna take a piece of this. We, I think we might cook that. Lots more bits of fallen beech here and lots more porcelain fungus. So we'll pick a few nice bits of this. There are some lovely little ones down there. There's a few, those are too small. But there's one on the end of here. Yeah, on the end of various different pieces of fallen beech. We'll pick a bit of porcelain fungus. And that will also go in the dinner. Oh, if they're growing on beach. Yeah, no, those probably are, but I, I'm gonna just leave those because I can't see that they're growing on beach. They almost certainly are because they just have the look of that, they have that glossy cap. 
So there's even more of it down around this side, and I don't know what that is. That's a polypore of some kind, I think. It's not chicken of the woods. It might be an edible one, but we don't take chances. So we're just going to admire it and leave it be. Another beech tree, a shed branch of the beech tree, and quite a lot of nice porcelain fungus. So we can afford to be picky here. We'll pick the nice specimens, add them to the basket. So we've got cauliflower fungus, we've got porcelain fungus. There are various other things around here. Yeah, mind the dogs treading on things. And there we've got, a I think that there is a death cap. <coughs> I believe so. I think that one there is an actual death cap. I quite often see the false death cap, but I think that's the real deal. More of this, I think it must be giant polypore, all around the roots of this beech tree. So this beech tree is probably not long for this world, because I can't imagine that this much fungus growing out of the root of a tree is doing no harm at all. There we go. Yeah. <coughs> not sure. Again, not sure what species we're looking at here. It's not one I'm very familiar with. And we're outside of our normal foraging area, so I'm seeing different species that I don't see quite so commonly around where I live, and seeing some things and not seeing some things that I do see commonly. I'm pretty sure that is the death cap there, Amanita phylloides. That one will kill you. That one will kill your whole family, actually, if you put that in the basket and in your soup when you get home. Now, I do get a lot of people asking me, when I identify poisonous mushrooms, why didn't I squish it into the ground? Why didn't I destroy it? There's a couple of reasons why I don't do that. One is this thing has its place. This, you know, the slugs and things eat this. It has its place in the ecosystem, but also destroying it won't do anything. This is just the fruiting body of an underground mycelial network. Destroying it won't achieve anything. It won't kill the fungus, it, because the fungus is not the thing you're looking at here. The fungus lives underground. This is the fruiting body. That would be a bit like expecting to kill an apple tree by stamping on an apple. So there, is, there really isn't much point, and it's not my job to try and make nature safe for people. Nature, there's a lot of things out here that would kill you if you ate them, in fact. A lot of these plants here, some berries off the trees here would kill you if you ate them. Not my job to go and scour nature and try and make it sanitary and safe for everybody. And I really don't think that's a good thing to do. So that's why I don't stamp on poisonous fungi when I find them. I don't destroy them. I just admire them for their visual aesthetics rather than their culinary properties. So we've got here, I think that is the false death cap. I think that's Amanita citrina. I'm not absolutely certain. There's another one here. But that's the one in previous videos I probably have said, oh look, a death cap. Um, it probably isn't a death cap, that one's probably Amanita citrina. Apparently, false death cap is edible, but I don't trust Amanitas anyway. I wouldn't pick an Amanita. It's just not worth it. That, I think, might be Boletus bardius. Yeah, I think it is, but it's not, not in great condition, so I think we'll leave it. And then we've got... Uh, a rather mature puffball there. Not quite mature enough to be releasing spores, but I bet if we cut that in half, it would be starting to turn black inside. This one here, I think, is the false chanterelle. It's definitely not real chanterelles. It tends to grow in association with pine trees, or conifers at least. So lots and lots of things to look at, but time is escaping us. So anyway, Time to get these mushrooms back to Atomic Shrimp HQ and see what we can make out of them. <coughs> Welcome to Atomic Shrimp Temporary HQ kitchen. It's uh, We're staying in a little cabin just for a week's break. We haven't had a break since several years, in fact. So we've just taken a little break in Dorset. I've got this lovely fungus that we've got to prepare. So. Let's get going. So always a bit of a challenge cooking in an unfamiliar kitchen, but we'll make the best that we can out of it. So yeah, this cauliflower fungus is still nice and creamy, coloured, and it's in very good condition. Lovely and firm. I'm just going to break it up 
so that anything that's lurking inside of all of these little branches will have a chance to get out. Yeah, there's something. Tiny little bug or something. But for the most part, it's really in very good condition. Yeah, so you can see a few pine needles, bits of dirt and things are falling out. So really all I'm doing is giving this a chance to, yeah, just as I'm undoing it, I'm giving all the dirt a chance for falling out by separating it into smaller pieces, which is going to work for what we want to make anyway, because this is going to be cooked together with some pasta. It might be quite similar in appearance and texture to pasta. I think these thick stalky bits will probably lose. I'll keep all of the little fronds. Good. Right, that bit can go on the compost. This we're going to give it a good rinse and then put it in a bowl while I think about how we're going to prepare these porcelain mushrooms. Now I don't have any concerns at all about washing these mushrooms because there are no gills, there's nothing here to absorb loads of water and become unpalatable or difficult to handle. These are, <laughs> it is almost like the texture of partially cooked pasta. Good, I think that's probably good. We'll just let that drain. These porcelain mushrooms, again, I am going to wash these because this sticky texture they've got on the cap has just picked up all sorts of dirt. I'm just going to give one of them a rinse and see how that works. Yeah, I think I might actually have to rinse these individually, then take them off their caps and put them in the pan. So these are going to require, unfortunately, individual rinsing get the stuff off the cap, pinch off the stalk, and then that will just go into the colander. The slimy texture of the cap is really quite interesting. I don't know what these are gonna be like to eat. I've not eaten this fungus before. I'm very confident that I know what it is, but this is my first time for trying it. So I'm not gonna eat a massive, I'm not gonna eat a ton of it. It's not a good idea to eat a huge amount of any fungus that you find for the first time. Not because you might be wrong, because you really need to get that bit right anyway. You need to get past the, the whole, might have picked something poisonous obstacle. But even non-poisonous mushrooms can sometimes give people, give some people a gastric upset. So not dangerous, just the more of it you eat, the more unpleasant that's gonna be. So yeah, first time round, we won't eat a ton of this. They've all stuck together with this, with this kind of weird slime that they have on them. I understand these are really good in soups because they, this kind of mucilage on, this, on the cap adds a bit of texture, a bit of silkiness to the soup. We'll have to try that sometime. So there you go, there's something you maybe didn't expect to see happened today me washing mushrooms I don't normally bother don't normally find it necessary and the mushrooms I'm just going to give them another little rinse <laughs> yeah the texture is kind of a little bit Halloween a little bit of olive oil nothing is familiar here <laughs> it's the dodgy old frying pan on a halogen and on a combination of halogen and kind of ceramic hob. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. Into there, I'm not gonna wait for the oil to heat up. I will use this as an indicator that things are actually moving. I've got some nice dry cure bacon and a couple of small shallots just diced. Bacon is just starting to show some crispy edges now, as are the onions, so now, in with the cauliflower fungus.
and we will give this some got some dried mixed herbs here tiny little pinch of salt because there's already salt in the bacon now we've got juice coming out of the mushrooms so at the moment it's simmering in a moment that will drive off and some of it will absorb back in and we'll be back to frying and that's where I need to get to pasta we've got on the boil now as well so that will cook in just a minute or two cauliflower fungus is now frying again so all of the moisture is gone we can hear it sizzling rather than bubbling which means it's time to throw in the slimy boys and I think with the larger ones I'll cut them in half I'm going to have to do these one at a time because they are so slippery you almost can't pick them up the smaller ones I think I'll just throw in whole that's going to get just a little sprinkle of garlic powder and I'm turning the heat down on that now because these are all but cooked and I just need that garlic to cook through and the porcelain mushrooms just need a tiny bit of final cooking. While that's taking place I've got some Wiltshire farmhouse cheddar here so I'm going to grate some of that into this bowl into there one egg we might go for two eggs but we'll see how we get on so so what we're going to do here is a bit like um, making carbonara but of course I'm using cheddar so it's not carbonara and I'm not following any kind of recipe but the principles are similar yeah we're gonna go for a second egg and this is gonna cook in the heat from the pasta and mushrooms and hopefully come together into a really nice lovely creamy sauce so we'll just get all that all ready right this is all gonna happen very quickly that pasta is done so I'm going to drain that, but first I'm just going to save a bit of the starchy water from that pasta. Pasta is drained, heat is off, and while that's still piping hot, give me that egg and cheese mix. And stir it so it doesn't scramble. I don't want it to scramble, I just want it to kind of create a creamy, cheesy sauce. In go mushrooms and bacon and other things let's get that dished out and give it a little taste I'm gonna have to serve and taste this just here because the light at the table is incredibly poor so let's go in for a little taste of that cauliflower fungus mmm texture is really interesting it's kind of it is a little bit like pasta, but it's got a crispness to it. It tastes fantastic. So there we go, cauliflower cheesy pasta. I've already eaten a little bit of it. But I just actually wanted to mention, I can't find the porcelain mushrooms in there. They've just vanished. They've just kind of cooked down to almost nothing. So I can't even tell you what the porcelain mushrooms texture is like, because I can't find one. How strange. The cauliflower fungus is great. Really nice texture. A little bit of a bite to it. Slightly meaty and great flavor. Really nice mushroomy, foresty flavor. Verdict from Jenny? Yeah, very nice. Good, good. Yeah. Yep, happy with that. So there we go. That was cauliflower fungus cheesy pasta foraged in Dorset and cooked here in the temporary Atomic Shrimp HQ. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.